Hi everybody, this is Carissa and I am happy to be back with another amazing WOW project with you today. We're going to be creating this beautiful card using a WOW Trios. Um, it's actually the Park Floral WOW Trios. I'm going to be working with this stamp set from Concord and Ninth. It is called Wonderful Florals. And I'm also going to be using the matching die set to cut out the sentiment and also the big floral image. I am going to be stamping this and embossing it with this hydrangea color that comes in that Park Floral Trio and doing a little bit of watercoloring with my Karin brush markers, watercolors. Um, I'm going to be using the colors uh, magenta, red, cool, aqua, curry and lush green. I am loving these markers and I can't wait to show you how I use them along with the embossing today. So I'm going to start by using this Distress Watercolor cardstock to do my stamping on and I just placed it into my mini misty um, holding it securely in place with that magnet because it is watercolor paper I'm going to need to stamp it multiple times I'm using my wow embossing clear ultra slow drying ink pad of course and just making sure that is tucked in the corner so it doesn't move when I open the door and have to stamp it again it is quite a large stamp you can see as well it takes up almost an entire uh, card front. I am creating an A2 size card which is uh, four and a quarter by five and a half and I find that using a uh, rag or uh, something to smooth over the door of the Misty helps to get that impression uh, pressure that we need to get that stamping. Uh, a lot of times in the winter or cooler months I have long sleeves on and I just pull my sleeve down and use that but uh, this stamp cleaning rag does the trick as well now that it's getting a little bit warmer so I'm happy with the stamping now and I can go ahead and start to sprinkle over the embossing powder and you can see this embossing powder is a mix of colors it's a color blend uh, so it has a bit of pink and blue and white and I really love this powder and I I was just wanting to try something different with watercoloring than traditional white or clear or even black. So once I sprinkle that and uh, put it back in the jar, I heat up my heat tool and starting from the back, get it kind of all over warm and then I'll bring it to the front and start to emboss that entire image. And you can see it uh, just go from that dull matte color to the shiny, beautiful uh, color blend that it has. And I'll show you here up close. You can see that beautiful shine. It's really smooth, although it has a lot of texture from the different color pieces in that powder. So now I'm ready to start my watercoloring. And to do that, I'm using a water brush with these Karin brush markers. I found that uh, creating um, a little bit of wetness on the paper uh, really helps to get these colors moving. So basically it's a wet on wet technique using these markers. So I just spread the clear water all over the part of the image that I'm coloring and then you can see I just dab in the color with the markers and the thing that I really love about these markers is that you have a lot of control and they move really well on wet paper so some watercolor markers they're not going to move like this once the paper is wet and so you have to lay the color down first and then try to spread it out with water and most will spread out quite well um, although you may have like a little bit of a line left or something that where it just soaks into the paper and you're not able to get a smooth uh, blend or transition and that's what one thing that I really like about these markers is that you can really get that smooth transition by wetting the paper first and then um, dabbing the marker onto that 
stamped area and you can see how it just moves immediately and starts to blend out into that wet area. Uh, that's what I love about watercolor. I love a very loose, fluid look, and so I'm very, very happy with these markers. And they're really easy to use over embossing, which is nice um, because they have a really fine tip, so I can really get into those detail areas. And um, I haven't found that the embossing affects the nibs in any way, but I have only used them a few times, so I can't really say for sure. I know with alcohol markers, you really don't want to color over embossing because it uh, it will gunk up your nibs, uh, So, but I haven't found that to be the case with these watercolor markers. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and continue to do the coloring and here I am doing a little bit of uh, uh, color blending. So I added that cool aqua at the tip of the petals on this particular flower and then I brought in that curry color at the base of the petals and blended them together and I really like the blend that it created here and almost reminded me the shape of this flower. I have no idea what it's supposed to be, but it reminded me of succulents. And so that was kind of my inspiration for the coloring of these flowers. I'm going to go ahead and put some music on and let you enjoy the coloring. And then I'll be back uh, when I'm done and finish uh, explaining my process with you. I'm just about done with all of the watercoloring on this image and I really love the way that the watercoloring looks against the soft color of that hydrangea embossing powder. I think it really enhances the watercolor look and uh, has just a bit of dimension and texture that really brings it out more than if I would have just stamped in clear or white. Okay, so now I'm going to take the Sunflower, which is also part of the Park Floral Trio set. Here you can see both of them together. And to do the die cutting that I wanted to do, I want, instead of die cutting them and then embossing each letter individually, which would have been 
quite tedious, I am just going to take my embossing pad and stamp it all across some white cardstock. I'm going to stamp it, make sure it's nice and covered, and then I'll just sprinkle on that sunflower embossing powder, and I will take the die cut and make sure that it uh, is going to fit the entire area. Then I'm going to start to heat emboss it, and you can see that it starts to change and create that beautiful glossy texture. Now the sunflower um, is just yellow. It doesn't have any other colors in it, so it's just this beautiful bright yellow. And to really make it stand out, and have a lot of dimension, I decided to do a double embossing. So after it was dry, I stamped it again with my, my ink pad, and then I come in a second time and emboss that. Now if I had done that right away, before it dried, I could have sprinkled on embossing powder here and just embossed it right away. Um, but I had let it dry and then I inked it up again and here you can see that beautiful gloss shine and texture. It's really, really pretty. So now I can take that and I ran it through my die cutting machine with the die and I'm going to use my little poker tool and get all of those letters out. Um, because it's so thick, it took a little bit of finessing, but I got them all out. Then I die cut that image we had watercolored earlier. Um, I love the matching dies in this um, collection because it's very unique, and I wouldn't want to have uh, taken the time to fussy cut all around that beautiful image, so that made it a lot easier. I was showing you earlier that I went ahead and die cut additional letters in white and adhered them all together to create extra dimension for that sentiment so it would really pop against um, that floral background and complete my card. Uh, to adhere that to my card base, which is just a navy cardstock, I'm really enjoying using pops of navy or um, just navy card bases. Uh, I feel like it is a neutral in itself rather than using um, black or gray, which I traditionally reach for, or even craft card stock. Uh, I'm really enjoying the navy blue as something a little bit different, and I feel like it's really classic and elegant. So to pop up that image, I used this scrapbook adhesives. Um, it's like a full sheet of dimensional foam, and I cut it uh, to fit um, the main back, and then I just cut a little bit of slivers to get around those uh, edges. And now I'm just centering it on my card base, which is an A2 size card. Now I'm going to use some mixed media adhesive from iCraft and adhere the uh, die cut letters on top of the stamped images or the stamped image where um, those letters would be. So this is a really cool die in that um, you can use the letters like I'm doing here and adding some dimension or you can have it kind of cut out those letters. So if I wanted to die cut uh, this card after or, or the stamp after I colored and everything, it would create a really cool negative space for the letters. So it's a really versatile stamp set and I really enjoyed using it for this project today. So once I'm done adhering all of these, I'll put a couple of uh, acrylic blocks on it just to hold those down while I go ahead and emboss my final sentiment, which is the Your So. So the card will say, you're so wonderful. And I think we could use these cards quite a bit for um, the special people in our life that deserve that. And I am embossing it on that same navy cardstock, except I'm going to use the ultra fine white, opaque white embossing powder. So I'm just going to stamp that first with um, my wow embossing pad. Then I'll go ahead and sprinkle that opaque white 
bright white super fine powder this is my favorite powder for embossing sentiments like this um, it just is so perfect and for the smaller sentiments that super fine is really what you want so I'm going to heat that from the back and then take it to the front and you'll see it melt pretty quickly then I have this small rectangle die from the waffle flower additional a2 die layers and it was the perfect size for that little sentiment and then I'll use some more foam adhesive uh, on the back of that and since it's dark cardstock I'm going to go ahead and use these black foam adhesives I find that those are really nice to have on hand when you're working with darker cardstocks uh, it just makes it so it's not so noticeable um, from the side and I'll just place that where I want it so it looks so cute I just love the way that this card turned out and I hope you're inspired as well to kind of think outside the box for uh, embossing images that you want to color try a different color try something that you might not think of initially uh, metallics are really fun to stamp with and color as well here are some close-ups of my card and if you did enjoy this video please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel um, we have so many amazing uh, talented designers sharing their projects here uh, every day with you and I know you're not going to want to miss anything so be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you want to find me you can also find me on uh, YouTube at Inky Fairy Designs and follow me there as well thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye